Hello and welcome to Sport for Business. We've got a special this morning looking at a really cool initiative which is taking place this Saturday. It's the Frontline Heroes Challenge. It's being organised by the Sports Department in Trinity College and I'm delighted we're joined by a number of people today to have a chat about this. But first off, I'll come to you, Rosie King, from Trinity College Sport. Tell us a little bit about what Frontline Heroes is and what it's going to do. Yeah, well, um, the Frontline Heroes Challenge was set up because we wanted to reach out to our alumni to just say a massive thank you to all of our um, students and past students that are uh, out there um, working on the, the, the front lines. So we just wanted to thank them for their, their dedication and their resilience at this time. So we, Trinity Sport, wanted to get involved. I mean, like what, what best way to do it than to set up a sporting event. Um, it's our first time doing uh, such an event. It's a virtual event taking place this Saturday, like you said. And um, yes, yeah, so to date we have 80 teams signed up um, and we have raised over three and a half thousand euro. And that is thanks to our main sponsor, Positive Success Group, who came on board with us and um, have really helped uh, raise the funds there. So it's basically, there's an opportunity for people to do um, a 45K race or 120, 100K or 250. Um, so we, we split it into three um, so teams could come on board and we wanted to encourage our sporting teams in Trinity to get involved. And we have a number of them involved, such as the fencing team and the athletics team and rugby's getting involved. So um, there's lots of participation going on. So yeah, that's, that's basically a quick synopsis. Great. So it was an ask of them to get involved in, in helping to support, but it was also an ask in terms of getting to, to run or cycle or walk or crawl or whatever way it is to yeah. actually get that distance done. Um, yeah. the, the money that's raised is going to be going to the St. James Hospital Foundation and the Tala University Hospital Foundation. And um, Kelly Crowley, you're, you're representing Tala Hospital uh, here yeah. today. Tell us a little bit about what that sort of level of fundraising is going to be able to do for you within the hospital and what is going to mean for your own team of frontline heroes? Yeah, so it's going to support ourselves as St. James's Hospital Foundation and St. Vincent's Hospital Foundation. And I suppose firstly what it allows us to do, um, generating any type of funds like this, particularly with COVID, it's allowing our staff to act quick, quickly and decisively and implement new projects that are deemed necessary by the hospital. Um, so for ourselves, we're looking for movable workstations. Um, and these will help reduce the risk of infection on, on different wards um, as, we, as we kind of go through the next stages of COVID. Um, for St. James's Hospital then, uh, they're looking to put a healing garden in. Um, again, spaces like that are always really welcome in hospitals, uh, particularly for people going through difficult times and to have that space. And then for Vincent's Hospital, uh, they're looking for more people eager as well. So all really important projects to keep everybody going over the next while. Okay, I think anybody who, who watched in, in the past week or over the past week, the RTE programme, um, mm -hmm. which was, was following St. James, I haven't come across anybody who hasn't seen that that wasn't just completely blown away by the actual physical visceral sight of, of, of what it is that, uh, you, know, that you and, and your teams have been going through. Um, speaking of those who've been going through it, Linda, you've been out on the front line throughout this. We know you uh, better as, uh, as a rugby player with with Leinster and breaking into the Ireland team but you've been you've been out there putting in the hard yards in the in the hospital corridors as well what has it been like from your perspective going out there as a wet behind the ears student nurse going into an environment like this that you could never have imagined no I don't think you can ever have imagined um, um thank you again bro for this platform um I think Going in, I just came back uh, from uh, the Six Nations. So, and I was doing my placement during the Six Nations. So, um, it was definitely something you can get ready for or expect it. 
uh, but at the same time, it's what I have loved to do, and I always love nursing. So yeah, I had to just pull up the sleeve and go into uh, a pandemic that it was, and it still is. So it was definitely it was challenging, but I'm so happy the fact that we have so many support. I don't think anyone expected it to be as big as it is. Um, but we were working there as a student. Uh, we definitely felt the support more because nobody even knew what it was at the time. Um, we're all trying to just really support each other along the way. And it was definitely challenging because everything kind of stopped. Um, I had rugby aside, but rugby stopped too. It was like the whole world just stopped for me. Um, but that bit was, bit, is a, was a bit challenging. But um, I think now I look back, I'm actually kind of like grateful <laughs> in a way that, yeah, I was able to pull it together because back then it didn't seem like anything could, could go back into normality. But seeing the result now, because of we all came together, we all worked, everybody played a part. Um, because of that, we're now in a situation where things are opening back again. But at the same time, it's not over. Uh, we still need to look after each other, still need to look after and listen to everybody, listen to everyone, uh, and wear the mask, and it's still, it's still not finished. So. And, and when, when you're in the thick of it, like you have been and as you say like you like you are and um, we can't forget that the the physical challenge of nursing is one that you're probably quite comfortable with in terms of the physical training that you're doing but the emotional challenge no. of nursing on a day-to-day -day basis and then layered on top of it with what's been going on here in an environment where nobody knew the rules as such how how difficult was that for both you and your colleagues working as a team in there were you supportive of each other yeah, I think uh, we we became even closer than ever because we had to support each other uh, at that time mentally, and it was challenging. Um, and I think the fact that we were the only people there, there wasn't any, um, it wasn't like family could come in and visit and anything like that. So we were we really had to connect with each other. We really had to support each other more than ever, and that was really special to see that yeah, we're not here by ourselves. We became family because we were constantly together. Because that's why I love nursing, is the fact that we're able to do that and we're able to just connect with each other and support. And I never felt like that. And it's unfortunate that a pandemic had to happen for someone to see it that way. But it was truly beautiful and we still do it. And because of that, um, you kind of look back and you appreciate that, yeah, we were able to come together and obviously there was so many support outside of the nursing that we can call um, anyway in Tala anyway there was so much support that there were phone number or anything if you were having a really bad day that you can come and talk to somebody but we always chat as a colleague like we were always talking about what was happening because we were facing it together um, and anything that happened, the fact that you could just talk to somebody just kind of relieved that fear or anxiety. Um, that, was, yeah. that was amazing about it. And I think while nobody could have ever wanted to go into an environment like this, you've been, you've been through, well, let's hope the first phase of it at least anyway, and you've emerged yeah. stronger as a result of it. And it's something that you, that you'll always have to, to look back on. Um, these, lessons that we learn through adversity are often the most keenly felt and if I come to you now um, Maureen you're in charge of the um, of, of, of the, the main sponsor behind this the positive success group and your business is all about that learning from these environments of of challenge and, ad and adversity just put into context for me something of what this pandemic has been like or has it been like nothing we've ever experienced before well it's it's nothing like i've ever experienced before and, and certainly the community of, of coaches and trinity alumni and trinity sport who we partner with on this none of us had anything to draw from that was relevant to this um, in terms of let's go to the manual on pandemics it just wasn't there so in fact one of the first things we did as you call out, Rob, you know, and how, how do we adapt and, and become agile to this? 
was we immediately created a community called Rapid Adaption, where we brought in lots of people and experts on how do you adapt, how do you adapt, how do you adapt? And really going to what Linda said, it was about that beautiful community spirit of just let's support each other. It doesn't really matter what your background is or what qualifications you have. And um, it touched everybody. And no more so from that RT program, I watched it and I don't know about you, but my heart was in my mouth. You know, the emotion of it touching our partners, our friends, our family, whether it's in St. James or Tala or Vincent's, um, we all knew someone that was caught in it some way. And for us, it's about how do we help that support system support those frontline heroes. We may not be at the front line in the hospitals. Um, that's where the really brave super people are. So how can we do it? We thought, um, well, Trinity Sport is one of our you know, partners in terms of we share value systems, we go back a long way. And this seems like the best way to challenge ourselves, show support, um, honor some of the hard work that we know lots of others are doing on our behalf. Um, and also in, in the times that Linda and Kelly point out, you know, this is a hard emotional um, mind trap for us all to be caught in. And physical exercise is one of the best ways to get out of that. So for me, it, ser it serves a lot of, you know, opportunities for us to come together, community spirit, really honor the heroes that are at the front line and maybe get people up working again, doing something that they didn't do before in terms of physical health to support our mental health. Because I, I think this is I think this is going to have long-term effects that we don't even know about yet. So we want to adapt, not just for now, but into the future to put exercise regimes in, maybe things we haven't tried before, but doing it together is always better and easier. Having someone say, on Saturday the 18th, we're doing this together, I'm much more likely to show up and do it than mm, will I do it or not. Um, so I, I love the fact that we're all coming together, we're doing it for a good cause, and we're learning with best lessons in mind. What's the best lesson we can learn from this and put back onto the rugby pitch, put back into the hospitals, put back into business, which is where we work. It seemed Rosie, having set it up, this up for us in, in Trinity Sport, had done an amazing job, as always, of uh, providing the perfect opportunity to bring people together for this. Great. And, and Rochelle, in terms of the, like the 80 teams that are, that are lined up there, I, I would imagine that they, there's a fairly broad spectrum of levels of preparation that they've been going into and, and getting ready for it. But, you know, 40 or 80 or, uh, you know, or, or 100 kilometers or even 250 kilometers is still 250 kilometers, regardless as to whether it's in, in your own back garden or whether it's around the streets of, of Dublin. How, how have you heard? Tell me some of the stories you've heard about how people are getting ready and preparing for this Saturday. Well, I think that there's a big diversity of input in terms of the level of preparation that has gone on. I think that's the way the challenge has been set up, that anybody from beginner to elite athlete can take part and get involved. So... I think that's the most important thing is that there's room for everybody. And uh, I think the, the biggest point of reference is it's not too late. It's not too late to show up, but it's not too late to enter a team. It's not too late, not too late, not too late. Even on Friday night, if you decide that, oh, I should have done it, it's not too late, you can join in. So I wouldn't like that. To, I wouldn't like the level of preparation to get in anybody's way from participating. But I know for sure that there have been people, of course, who are uh, continuing to um, you know, ready themselves in order to probably win uh, whatever challenges that there are and prizes that there are from participating in the event. Uh, sports people are, as you know, Rob, competitive to the last. So any opportunity we get to show up and prove ourselves, plus honour um, our frontline heroes as a combination is always a good thing. Would you agree? Absolutely. We'll, 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 we'll have the details as to, as to how to enter and the links and things of like that that we'll, we'll, we'll put up at, at the end of the, the programme. But Rosie, uh, can you just talk us through where, where should people go? So if I am inspired to run 250 kilometres on Saturday, how do I go about registering and what's going to happen for me then? Yeah, so if you go on to the Trinity Sport website, um, or you can also go on to any of our socials or Instagram page or Facebook page, and the link is, if you, you just click into the link and it'll lead you through step by step what you need to do. Great, excellent. So and still, like Rochelle has said, there is still time and the, it, it's still open um, and donations are still welcome. 
even if you're not taking part, there is still the opportunity to get involved in this um, by do do donating. So that's right. There's a GoFundMe page as, as well, which we can we'll put the details of that up, and and you can make a contribution in there. I want to give the final word to you, Linda. Um, it, it, think of it like a halftime team talk that. Uh, that you've got an opportunity now to, to inspire people as to why they really should either contribute or get out into the garden and run their kilometre or 10 kilometres on, uh, on Saturday. So what will it mean to you as a frontline hero for them to do that? For me, it means everything that especially sport is so important. Not, not because of how we look or what we want to do to to get out there but for me it has definitely as a frontline worker um sport has definitely inspired to just for my mental health especially uh dealing with what i'm dealing with in hospital every day for my mental health it's so good for me to step outside and just even walk and just breathe that fresh air uh for the brain i think it's so important and no matter like what Rochelle said uh no, Rosie, no matter if there's no age, no limitation, don't limit yourself to anything. Get out there, get some fresh air, just get moving, get your body moving, especially during the lockdown, we weren't able to get outside and do the exercise. So it's so important now that we have the opportunity to go out and just get the fresh air and get, just get loosened up a bit and enjoy it. And you have to do it because you love it because of your mental health, because you want to get better and just get your friend or two and just encourage each other. Just get out there for all of us. Just don't do it for yourself, just do it for all of us. And get some fresh air and just be happy. <laughs> Great. Well, we look forward to supporting you when you're wearing the blue of Leinster and the green of Ireland in, uh, in, in the future, at some point in the yet-to-be-determined yeah. future. But we'll do it at the weekend for, in thanks for everything that you've done and you and all of the nurses and doctors and, and staff within medical establishments. Um, Kelly, uh, the best yeah. of luck with spending the money wisely. Um, Rochella and Maureen, thanks very much for supporting it. Rosie, thanks again for the inspiration of doing it. Um, we will have, as I say, the details of how to do it it's the frontline heroes challenge it all takes place this saturday july the 18th and it's all in support of people like linda who has been uh, such a rock for us all throughout these past few difficult months so uh, thank you very much to the whole team thank you.